So an amazing thing happened when um, Paul was presenting this gospel presentation in Romans, uh, the latter part of nine. He begins by explaining, since the Jews had done this work, um, had followed the Ten Commandments by works, that the ultimate purpose of the Ten Commandments could not be fulfilled um, by works. And that the Ten Commandments, according to Isaiah, had become a stumbling block. And that the perfection that God wanted from them would happen through the person of Christ and not through these commands. And so indeed, they had, the Ten Commandments had become a stumbling block. Um, they simply got hung up on them and could not come to faith because they could not see that God wasn't demanding works from them. Now, if you know anything about the Old Testament, you know that this, what Paul's saying here is not foreign to the Old Testament. It's there. Um, he quotes Isaiah and um, pretty, pretty fascinating stuff. And these passages triggered an idea in me that a passage I think is so fascinating. And it's uh, the woman at the well. And now I've, I've heard it taught that the woman at the well, what was going on is she was going in the afternoon and that this was an odd time to go because the water wouldn't be as cool. And so she was an outcast and therefore was going to the well um, to get water at a weird time. And I think that's true, but I think that it's incomplete or maybe I shouldn't say incomplete. Maybe I should say it's only part of the picture. Um, spirituality is a very odd thing in it's like water in that you drink water and it's very satisfying when you drink it, you know, and it's like, Oh man, if you're really thirsty, man, it's the best tasting thing ever. But then you get thirsty again. And spirituality can be that way. You can have some successes and it feels really good, but then failure is right around the corner, inevitably. And so what happens with this woman is there's kind of a, a, a very interesting lesson going on here. Yes, she was probably an outcast. She had Jesus said she had five husbands, but that wasn't the only issue. It would be sort of like this. Let's say it's a Saturday night and you hear about this guy who, or girl, whatever, and they they do a horrible crime. They're accused of a horrible crime and they're out on bail. And the next morning you go to the church and they're coming by your church. You might be tempted to go, what? <laughs> what are they doing here? You know, <laughs> they, they're potentially being indicted for this horrible crime and they're at my church. And I think it's a similar thing here with this woman at the well. This was Jacob's well. And when she, when Jesus asked, can you draw me some water from the well? She's kind of like, do you know, this is a sacred place. And there's this interesting teaching going on between the water where he's saying, you'll never thirst again. And she's going there for practical reasons, but I think she's choosing to go to this well because it's a sacred well. And she mentions the, the, the Samaritan temple. And I don't think she could show up at the Samaritan temple. So she goes to this well. I could be wrong, but that's an estimate that I'm making. I've learned from other comments in other of my videos that I'm way off. So maybe I'm way off on this one. But And the arguments on that comment were really good. Um, but um, thoroughly refuted. I was thoroughly refuted. But this woman, um, you know, it's possible that this was a spiritual act for her. But she was going to have to keep going to the well. Just like the Jews were going to have to keep going to the temple and keep trying to please God. And so Jesus says, how about this? How about I give you living water? And she says, you have no way of getting water from the well. It's really interesting. And it's not easy to decipher exactly what's happening here. We have a lot of simplistic teaching on this. I myself, I think, have taught in the past simplistically about these passages. It's kind of complicated, but he's like, I'm going to get, it's, it's going to be, you'll never thirst again. This will be bubbling up to eternal life. 
a well that bubbles up to eternal life. And just the idea here is, again, like water, he offers a spirituality that you don't need to keep going to a sacred place. And she even says, which temple, which mountain are we going to go to to worship? If you're a prophet, which one? And he says, the time is coming where the Father is looking for people to worship in spirit and in truth. And so, anyway, getting back to Romans, if you see it as the Ten Commandments have to be obeyed, you're like this woman that keeps going to this well. Yeah, you're going to get thirsty again, though. But if you see the Ten Commandments as guiding you towards the understanding of need of faith in Christ, as Romans prescribes, then you have eternal life and you have no reason to keep trying to find a way to be right with God. You will have a, fulfill, a spiritual fulfillment. I am um, hearing that if you don't say the words, like, share, and subscribe, that the algorithm will bury your videos. So it's they try to homogenize these videos where everything you make is, is the same for everybody. Like you wouldn't know whether you want to like and subscribe. So I'm going to experiment a little bit, a little bit with that, and um, and try mentioning that in my videos. I don't like it because I feel like I'd rather edify any audience I have, whether it's zero or fifty that they can make their own decisions. If you want to do those things, you'll do them. But whatever, um, do those things. Have a good one.